The Saints hadn't had the championship game stolen from them quite yet as the bigger-than-normal supermoon started rising in the east just before sundown Sunday night. Supermoons are nicknamed super because the moon happens to be closest to Earth in its elliptical orbit about the same time it's fully lit by the sun. Well, as the moon rose and the sky darkened, the brighter-than-normal nightlight that the moon cast in the yard was just the beginning of the show. All eyes were on the sky after that, and for a while it looked like any full moon, until around 9 o'clock there came a faint darkening on the bottom of the moon. You weren't sure at first, thought your eyes may be playing tricks on you, but no, not long after, the shadow took on form and a definite line divided the brighter part of the moon from the dark part. But since this was a total eclipse, pretty soon the brightness was dim enough to see that the dark part wasn't dark at all, but a reddish brown giving it what some people call a blood moon effect. It used to be just rust until somebody found blood moon and revelations in the Bible, which has nothing to do with an eclipse. First time I ever saw a total eclipse of the moon, my biggest surprise is how dark the yard got from how bright it had just been and how many stars came out. Of course, the stars were there all the time. They were just washed out by the brightness of the full moon, which had now gone dark. Orion was out, the hunter, and the double star in the middle of the Big Dipper's handle was pretty plain. You can see it with your naked eye if you have sharp vision. And a bunch more. Plus the cold. I didn't hang around for the relighting of the moon. I knew it was going to happen, but too chilly. But how about nature putting on a show of just how organized it is and orderly and even predictable? If you just use that algebra you thought you'd never use. All of it out in our backyards Sunday night.